there are a load of options available to you for implementing a backend API. And Nux3 has just introduced another one with Nuxt Nitro. So what do you choose for your backend? Well, I'm going to pick Nitro along with Fastify and a .NET API and run some tests and see if we can draw any conclusions from that that will help us make a choice between them. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is I find you, and welcome along to the channel. So today we're looking at comparing three backend API technologies, pitting them against each other, and seeing if we can draw any conclusions from that that might help us make an educated choice in which one we should use for our backend API. So our objective here is to do just that. We're going to execute a load test and we want to compare the behavior of three functionally identical APIs so they all do exactly the same thing and we're going to compare Nux Nitro which is the new kid on the block with Fastify which is a Node.js based API and we're going to pit that against something that's maybe a little bit more industry standard a .NET based API and what we're going to do is we're going to run some load tests that will run for a set period of time and we're trying to get to uh, running that period of time without incurring any errors in the API. So we want zero errors output as a result across all of these three technologies. And we're going to run each load test for each technology three times rather than just doing it as a single execution. You can get some anomalies doing that. So we'll do three load tests so that we can average out the results and it should give us a more accurate feeling for how each technology behaves. So in terms of the test execution landscape, we've got a JMeter client server that's going to run, and we're going to run with 30 virtual users and a 30 second ramp up to reach those 30 virtual users. So we're going to add a new virtual user every second, and we're going to run for a period of five minutes in total. The server side, is a virtual server that's got four virtual CPUs allocated to it and four gigabytes of RAM allocated to it and bucket loads of gigabytes of hard disk for swap space, etc, etc. So that's where we're going to run our API technology up. And in terms of test execution, each virtual user is going to iterate round and it's going to make a call to get all the posts. So this is simulating a blog API, for instance. So it's going to call to get all of the posts that are available. It's then going to make a subsequent call to get a post for a specific ID, so a certain post. And then it's going to make another call for comments that have been attributed to that particular post. So three calls in total per virtual user per iteration. And it's going to keep iterating around until the five minute time period is up. So the post ID that it's going to get and the comments for the post ID is randomized between 1 and 100. So there's 100 posts in the posts file that are available. And we're going to randomize which post it gets on each iteration through. So it gives us some kind of randomized data, but not too randomized that it should skew the results too much. And then we're also going to do some assertions against the response. So we're going to make sure that we get obviously a 200 code come back for each of those requests. And we're also going to validate the JSON that comes back. So we're going to make sure that it comes back with the expected data shape at least. So if it's an array, we expect an array back. We're validating it at that level, nothing too detailed in terms of the, the assertions, but just enough to make sure that we're not getting any errors or erroneous responses coming back. So let's jump over and have a look at the three APIs that we've got. So this is the Nuxt API that I've got. And what I've got is a posts JSON file. So all of our APIs have these the same posts JSON file, which is where all the data is held. These are all the posts that you can get. So there's ID from one to 100. So if I scroll right to the bottom, you can see that we've got 100 posts available to us. And the other file that we've got is the comments one. So against a given post, there is a comment that's attributed to that particular post. So the post ID is the same here, but we've got two different comments. So there's a number of different comments that come back 
for a given post. And then in terms of the actual Nuxt Nitro code, I've got a server routes API folder. And within that, I've got a posts. So it's that's the URL that it would give us is at API slash posts. And that just returns the content of the posts file. So we import that in and that's what it returns back to us. I've also got a folder for post that expects an ID parameter as well. So you would get a URL of API slash post slash one, two, three, four for whichever post ID you want. And when you do that, we can then tease out that particular parameter from the event context. And we go and find that post ID inside the posts JSON file. So again, we're importing that same posts file and we're just finding that particular post. The comments also lives under here. And again, it goes and finds, but this time from the comments, JSON, the post ID based on the ID that's been passed in and it finds all the comments that are attributed against that post ID. So if I run this up and go to localhost 3000 API post, you can see that I just get the contents of that posts file and then I can pick an individual post of say ID 25. So I get ID 25 come back and then I can get the comments that are attributed to post ID 25. That gives me four or five comments against that. And all three APIs look exactly the same from a URL perspective. They all behave identically. So let's go and look at the Fastify one. So Fastify is slightly simpler. We've got our data files again, and we've just got a single index TypeScript file. So we import our things that we need to import, including our data files. We set up our Fastify server properties. So our port that we're going to run on. And then we have our URLs that we're supporting. So we've got our get API posts, which does exactly the same as the Nuxt API. It just returns the content of the file. The get for an API post expects an ID. And that ID is teased out of the incoming URL from the parameters. So we go and find that exactly the same as we did in the Nuxt API and the same for the ID comments as well. We just have another one that instead of using the posts JSON uses the comments JSON instead to go and get the data. And then the last thing that we do is we actually start our Fastify instance. So that's the Fastify API. And then last, let's go and look at the .NET one. So this is obviously not a Node.js based API. This is a .NET based API. So this is fundamentally different. So um, we have a data folder where both of our posts and comments JSON live. We have a model folder. We have a posts collection, which is just a list of post types. And then we have a post object itself. So that's what a post looks like. It consists of a user ID, an ID, a title and a body. And we have exactly the same for comments. The comments is a list of comment objects and a comment has these particular properties. So then back in our program CS, as the API is starting up, we read all the posts from the posts file and we populate that into a posts collection, which is our list of posts essentially. So we've got this posts object available to us later on in this file. And likewise with the comments, we read the comments JSON and we've got a comments collection that's open to us. So then when we come to do our mapping of the APIs, we map a get request to API posts, and that just returns that posts collection that we've set up and read from the file. We also have a get for API post ID, exactly the same as we did with our Nuxt and Fastify APIs, and that is querying into that posts collection for the given ID that's been passed into this particular get request. And then lastly, the comments one does exactly the same thing, but against the comments collection. So all three are doing exactly the same thing. They all read the file. They all cache and hold on to that data once it's been read. So they're not reading it on a per request basis. The import statement for Nuxt will do exactly the same. It will cache that information and hold on to it for the duration that the application is running or the API is running. So these are all 
functionally identical in what they're doing. So let's go and run the tests and then we can look at some results. So I've run the tests, nine test executions in total. As we said, we're going to do three for each technology. And these are the averaged out results. So we can see that we get individual results for each type of request that we're making. So one to the posts, one to the post given an ID and one to the post comments. And these are averaged across those three runs, except for the min and maxes, which are the minimum and max across the three runs. So it's the worst request against the best request of those three runs is what's in these results here. So if we look at the totals for each technology, we can see that .NET in the five minutes that it was allocated averaged 75,000 requests, um, 75,455 requests across the five minutes so it may have done slightly better or worse on a, on a given run, but this is the average of those. And when we compare that across to Fastify, we can see it's very similar. There's a difference of a few hundred requests. And likewise with Nitro, um, there's about a thousand requests difference between Nitro and .NET and a, a few hundred, almost a thousand, but not quite difference between Nitro and Fastify. So Nitro is the slowest in terms of the total requests that it's going to get through. And that's reflected in the throughput figures as well. 252 requests per second for .NET, 251 requests per second for Fastify and 248 requests per second for Nitro. Min, max and average, these are in milliseconds. So the average time taken for a getting the posts in .NET was 15. The average time taken for get posts in Fastify was 16. And the average time taken for get posts in Nitro was 18 milliseconds. And then looking at the max, there's an interesting one here. So Nitro obviously had some kind of uncomfortable moment here where it took three seconds to return the posts. So that's a worst case, but obviously not the average, given that the average is 18. So this is why you do your tests across multiple runs and try and average out to get rid of any of these kinds of anomalies. But it's interesting to see that some of these worst cases for Nitro are, I mean, these are nearly a second. Whereas when you compare Fastify, its worst case is still under half a second and .NET is still under, well, by and large, under a quarter of a second just over a quarter of a second there. So in terms of data as well, so if you're trying to look at how much is transferred to and from these APIs, we can see that .NET comes out. In fact, they're all, they're all very similar again. So just shy of 9,000 bytes on average for .NET. Again, just shy of 9,000 bytes, slightly higher, but again, we're talking Virtually no difference between .NET and Fastify. And again, virtually no difference between Fastify and Nitro. But does this give us the whole picture? If we just looked at raw results, does that help us make our technology choice? So let's go and look at how the server behaved across the runs for the various technologies. So here is the behavior of the CPU or the four virtual CPUs that are allocated. And this is the percentage in use as, as we go across the run. So we can see at the start of the run, we're not really using the CPU at all. The machine was idle pretty much. And then as we start our test, we can see that things start to get a little bit busier. We start to hit towards 20% usage. And then you can see that towards the kind of middle end of the run, all three technologies start to hit the CPU a lot more. Why this is, who knows, maybe it's just because of the duration that things are trying to catch up and things start to slow down on the server. That, that means that the CPU gets more busy, but all three technologies, as you can see, behave the same at pretty much the same point as well, which is interesting. The technology that has the least impact on the CPU is, is the .NET one. So it only ever leaps to around the 40% usage. Nitro probably comes in next where it jumps to around the 60% usage. 
and then Fastify does actually reach almost 80% usage just on that spike there. Fastify seems to consume more of the CPU is what I'm reading from this, followed by Nitro, followed by .NET. And then as we can see, as our test comes to its end, after the five minutes, things start to ramp down as the requests catch up. So let's go and look at the same for the memory stats and see how things behave for the memory. And we can see a similar picture that at the same point where the CPU gets busier, also there is a jump in the memory usage. So there's clearly some kind of behavior that happens equally across all three. And we can see that Fastify by and large uses the least amount of memory of the three. Nitro peters along and then .NET kind of has a bit of a jump halfway through um, and takes the lead at this point, um, but then doesn't consume as much as some of the others when they reach their spike here. So read into this what you will. And bear in mind that this is only showing up to about a third of the usage of the four gigabytes available. So this is only showing about the usage of one gigabyte of RAM effectively. Fastify jumps to using about a gigabyte of RAM at the end of our test when it hit this spike here. It's using about a gigabyte whereas .NET is using slightly less than that and interestingly ramps right down once the test and the requests cease. So it does claim all of that memory back. So there's probably some kind of garbage collection going on here, whereas the node ones don't seem to, to ramp down quite so much. So there doesn't seem to be as much garbage collection going on at the end of the run for the node ones. Good or bad, who knows, they probably just get to reuse that memory if you start ramping up another test or doing something like that. And then last but not least, the other useful thing to have a look at is how busy is the disk. We can see that .NET had some kind of spike on disk usage here, so maybe this was the result of some garbage collection. But again, all three APIs behave pretty similarly and they all start to get busy in terms of disk at exactly the same point again. And Nitro seems to be the busiest in terms of disk, followed by Fastify, which seems to spike quite dramatically in terms of its usage. And .NET is a little bit more static in its usage, so not fluctuating quite so much as Fastify does. Where does that leave us in terms of trying to make our choice between these three technologies? Well, I think it shows that all three are stable. We got through the tests with zero errors, so all three of these technology choices would be suitable for backends in terms of being stable. They all are by and large pretty much identical. I mean, you can really pick holes in some of those results. The throughput figures were pretty much identical. You're talking five, 10 messages a second difference between the two, which is next to nothing really. But looking at some of the stats on the CPU and memory and disk, .NET using least amount of CPU, given that in the cloud you get charged in compute time, you might find, and this is just my opinion, that .NET could prove the cheaper option if you were running this for your API over a period of time. So over six, 12 months, you might see that .NET could give you some kind of cost saving, I think, versus the, the node-based technologies purely on compute time alone if that's the way you're being charged. So it's a very subjective statement and I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions. This is just my opinion. So if I had to pin a recommendation, if I was pinned down to it, for that reason that I've just stated above, I probably would say that .NET would be my recommendation if I was giving this to a customer followed by Fastify and followed by Nitro. But that's not to say that I'm discounting using any of these. They're all perfectly feasible APIs. And we have to bear in mind that Nitro is only at release candidate at this point. So that could well get faster as we move towards an official release and may get closer to the Fastify and .NET figures going forwards. And with that, I'd like to know what you think. So would any of these results sway your decision in which technology stack you would use for your backend or recommend for any of your customers. What technology stack are you using at the moment? Are you using any one of these three or are you using something else? Let me know in the comments. And with that, I wanna thank you very much for watching. And if you do find this video useful, then do consider hitting the like button so that it can find more people. And 
I will see you in the next video.